Everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back yeah. to less, no, not less than normal. Oh no. my God, wrong show. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> back. Yeah, we, and we've never hosted less day. than normal, like just the two Literally of us. Literally never. I've been a guest once, and <laughs> somehow I think now I own the We're show. We're blaming it now. <laughs> yeah, because I'm coming for the brand. Watch right. out. <laughs> no, this is um, a double D estrogen power hour. That's it's been a lot. Tuesday, y'all. It's been a Tuesday that feels like oh a Monday gosh. and somehow right? a Thursday. I don't know what the fuck is happening. I woke up. All I know is uh, that I'm displeased about it. Right. Yeah. I woke up in my brain going, it's like Saturday. No, it's not. Oh. It's Monday. No, that's still not right. What I would give for it to be a Saturday right now. Right. Oh. Like genuinely. If I could read you last weekend all over. I don't know if I want to redo last weekend because, I mean, I we'll talk about it on the weekends. Yeah. But um, <laughs> there you go. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, um, producers finally lost it. The yeah. producers finally lost it. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Welcome to the official start of our new start time which is 6 p.m we did finally yes. come to this because it seems like <laughs> this is when more of y'all are available too and we definitely right. want this to be a show that's a little bit more interactive 
Um, not quite as interactive as the community game night, but definitely more interactive. Right. So we're going to be streaming this show at six on Tuesdays from now until we change our mind and do something different. Right. <laughs> Which will be in like six, eight months. You never know. You know what I mean? We keep it interesting over here. Keep it spicy. Oh, um, Lord. He found his <laughs> marble, y'all. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> speaking of less than normal, though, the boys will be back tomorrow. Uh, and I yeah. believe, I mean, hashtag major spoilers. Um, I believe they're going to be talking about D23 a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, a ton yeah. of stuff that's happening. Right. Um, why you got to yell, though? Yeah. I'm not yelling. Dave's yelling. Dave's yelling. I think everything is about me when it comes to chats. 100%. Right? 100%. Yeah. I'm That's right there normal, with you. I think. It's like, no, you're clearly talking to me about to me. me at me. To me and only me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, so, yeah, that's what the boys will be doing tomorrow. So, yeah. feel free to join us for that. Uh, I have dinner plans tomorrow, unfortunately. Right. So, I will, I'll have to watch the replay, which y'all can also do over on our YouTube channel. Right. We have one of those. We do. And if you're watching this on our YouTube right now, hearing me talk about YouTube, very meta. Welcome to right. It. It's YouTube section. Yeah. Um. Hang so on. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, yeah. like and subscribe. I'm holding the video hostage. I'm holding mm -hmm. a hostage. Like and you liked and subscribe. Okay, you guys can continue. Okay, thank you. I was gonna say I'm gonna thank you for reacting on stage so two and take it back. Mutiny. I want to be in control channel. of my show. Right? Our show. But <laughs> not Dave's show is the ultimate thing. Right? In this there, instance. Yeah, yeah. There are only two Ds. Well, technically there's four, but that's beside the point. <laughs> um, I mean, true. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't talk about the other ones. <laughs> right? It's just the two of us. That's all. Just the two of us. Um, well, how was your weekend, Danger, in uh, this past quiet. week since we last saw each other? It was relatively yes. quiet. Um, Matt had a family reunion with a Discord each of us. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, but no, he was at a family reunion with his dad's side of the family, so I was kid-free oh, nice. all weekend. Um, had some stuff done around the house. But otherwise, was just kind of chill. Um, Sunday, I started streaming on my own channel, which is crazy and scary, but fun. It was wonderful. Thank you. I Definitely didn't that. cry. Definitely, that was. There's no video okay. proof of that anywhere uh, on the internet. You no, can't find pretty, it. Right? Never. No. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. If it is, I'll delete it. It's my channel. I can do that. <laughs> you can do uh, that, yeah. <laughs> You don't even have to ask anybody permission. You can just do I it. I know. It's, I can just Isn't do nice? shit. It, it yeah. is. But it's also terrifying because I'll end up getting myself in trouble someday. Um, but We'll worry about it when it happens. Right? And then I got a yeah. cute little gift from my boss today. Aw. It's a it. noodle bowl. That is so cute. Isn't it? I'm super excited. I love and I'm that. super soft socks that say maybe later. <laughs> can't tell but it does that's my it. fucking motto <laughs> right maybe later. and then uh a dirt cake cookie from crumble cookies that i haven't even opened yet uh okay she says they're really good i have mixed feelings about crumble if i'm honest because yeah. i do like some of their stuff i'm a huge peanut butter person just in general and so their peanut butter yeah. ultimate peanut butter cookies are very good but they're like all too often not cooked enough in the middle so it's like eating raw dough and I That's don't appreciate amazing. that. Like, I want it to be soft and, you know, light and fluffy for a cookie, right. but I don't want it to be, like, unbaked. With rocks in it and a minion. That is super cute, though. That looks adorable. Yeah. But it also looks like a pile of dog shit, so. Oh. You win some, you lose some. I mean, it is called dirt cake, so. Yeah. Um, what is that or banana cream pie? I don't like banana flavored things. Really? So, oh man. Yeah. I love banana flavored things. Yeah. I love them not a lot. one bit. Um, yeah. 
And yeah, that's fair. So, and then we launched uh, Super Secret Craft, which has been Dave's uh, brainchild. Yeah. It took two years for him to create. And there were shenanigans afoot last night. As it not by be. me, of course. Uh, Never. I gave Never myself. Not once. Never, not, not once, not ever. Zach definitely yeah. was not throwing custard at people's faces. Definitely didn't happen. That's um, always a rascal. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, yeah, so is literally everyone else time. involved in that project. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's a good time. So it's going to be a like really fun scenario. I basically just like bolted for the woods and then found myself a hole, and no one knows where I am now. I'm <laughs> well, I feel awful that I missed it, but I ended up Don't falling be. asleep at 7 30 last night. I'm like, so literally. Jealous. I sat down on my bed for one second. I was like, you know, I can just sit here and watch a YouTube video. It'll be fine. Nothing bad will happen. <laughs> and fell asleep by like 7.30. Woke up at like 2 in the morning. I was like, fuck, I didn't eat dinner. So now I'm going to go make myself ramen. And then immediately climb back in bed. <laughs> and then I still somehow managed to be late for work. And now, mind you, I work from home. <laughs> so I just have to open my bedroom door and walk into the living room. And I'm there. And I was... Still late. still late so yeah that's how it hey, worked for me you know you know i'm sure at some point it could have been worse some way it could have been worse um, it could have absolutely been worse i was just so exhausted from the weekend so this sunday yeah. we started our lacrosse clinic um that's which we right. do every fall and it's always a really good time but the thing is i was not prepared for it at all emotionally physically spiritually like you mean it, not prepared for it um and so we practice in the fall on like a grass field where we're normally on a turf field and with my plantar's fasciitis acting up the way it is being on uneven ground like that while struggling with plantar's fasciitis i was mm. in so much fucking pain like so much pain sunday night i could barely walk um so Monday, my body was like literally just recovering, which is probably why I fell asleep at 7.30. You know what I mean? Um, but it was fun. Um, on we only had one kid go home crying, which is, you know, par for the course when you're working with kindergarten through fourth grade girls. She had right. had a birthday party earlier in the day and was really tired. And her friend hadn't shown up yet, so she felt like she was all alone in the world. So she was just like uncontrollably sobbing and was like, I want my mom. So I brought her over to her mom. Aww. And I was like, I'll do everything with you. Like, I'll be your buddy. And she was like, no, I don't want you. And I was like, okay. Oh, man. Thanks, to be a kid so again. Sis, like, yeah. Yeah. It was rough. Um, but other than that, it was really good. I don't usually is don't work with you. Is that just a random anything. bag of candy you have? What the fuck? It's like oh, Chex trim? Mix and Cheez-Its and cashews and raisins and... Well, fuck you, I have peanut butter m and I've got assorted candies to my left. And mini Starburst. Oh, fuck Ooh, yeah. I love mini combos. unwrapped Starburst. So yeah. I so want to try, weekend. have you seen the TikTok thing where you take a pack of these and put them in a coffee maker, like in a filter, and then you put tequila where the water goes, and then you no. run it through the coffee maker. And it gets the flavoring from the Starburst in there. And uh -huh. then you have it drip into a glass over ice. And supposedly, it's crazy good. I've yet to try it. Yeah. But it might be worth trying, even if I have to use the... Pot. Well, I've got, like, the old, small coffee pot hmm. that I could just clean that real good. Um. And try it in the I mean, I guess if you one. have a, a filter, it might not clog yeah. it up. Yeah. No, you put it through know. the filter. You know, you put it in the filter basket thing. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I might, maybe I'll try it. I mean, I only have like a super old Keurig that someone gave to me. And I don't yeah. think I can do that with that. I don't think it'll work. Probably the same. not. Probably also, not. I don't know what like superheated vodka or tequila is gonna smell like. That makes me anxious. Cause that curd gets shit super hot. Right. And I don't so. know how you would do it with a Keurig. 
Yeah. Anyway. And I don't really, I'm not a big coffee person other than Starbucks. <laughs> That's fair. Starbucks pumpkin spice. Um, so like, I don't, I have coffee pods in my house, but they're for like when other people are here. Right. So I don't have a need for like an actual coffee maker. Right. Hot sake. Yeah, hot is sake delicious. is good. That's true. But it's a different so thing maybe... than like hot tequila. I don't know right. if that would be good. And maybe it's something that I'll try and report back. I mean, for the sake yeah. of the channel, I think I can. You should make it a TikTok for the LTN TikTok. I could. Yeah. I could. Um, also, oh, Do you want to take last bets on whether or not? Ooh. What is that? So it's it bullet, old-fashioned cocktail, like pre-made cocktails. Where do they sell Super that? strong. The liquor store. Really? But you know okay. bullet bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, let's do. They have these and Manhattan's um, that Bullet mm -hmm. makes. It is so I do like a Manhattan, but I I fuck with an old fashioned more mm -hmm. to be honest. Super smooth, really good, just by itself, you know, over ice and stuff. But... Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to my local ABC store and yeah, look at that. which you can find. Yeah, so sipping on that in between uh, the beer because I got yeah. Feeling a little like wintery, you know, mm -hmm. big in the fall. So I got their dark lager. Oh, nice. That's Do we want to take I'm a bet as to whether or not I'm going to sleep through my alarm tomorrow? Because I just ordered loop earplugs. So mm. like the ones that are like, they're supposedly the quiet ones. And I got them in like such a pretty color. <gasps> you. Um because of all the issues I have with my upstairs neighbors yeah. and people playing pool in the courtyard till fucking three o'clock in the morning. I was like, all right, let me try these earplugs. And I tested it out. Like I went into my room and they're like, they were cleaning the like courtyard grills and whatnot. Um, so I was like, oh, this will be perfect. Like if I can't hear them, it'll be fine. So I put them in, couldn't really hear much of anything. Like you can still hear a little bit of sound, but it's like not as bad. You know what I mean? It's like if the you know dishwasher is running kind of a situation. Um, and I was like, all right, let me try putting on like a timer and see if I can hear the beeps. And I heard none of it. Like I had to like pick up my phone and bring it like to my face to hear it. And then I was like, all right, let's do it. Like the alarm tone sounds like, and then I could hear a little bit. And I mean like yeah. a little bit. And so I'm like, I don't know if it's safe to sleep with these in because I'm the kind of bitch that would absolutely sleep through that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Because, like, I've tried yeah. other, like, earplugs in the past, and they fall out in the middle of the night. But these ones yeah. feel really snug, like they're supposed to. And they're also super flat against your ear, so you can lay on your side without it, like, yeah. hurting your ears, which is a problem I was having, too, with the other ones. So, I'm looking um, at their website I'll now. I'll report back. Yeah. yeah. And I love it, because it comes with, like, colors. Like, you have different yeah. colored cases. There's other ones too, like if you just want to like, if you're going to a concert and you don't want it to be so loud that you blow your eardrums out because nobody knows how to sound mix anymore for live right. shows, um, it'll like just dampen it a little bit, um, right. which I think is super cool. But I haven't well, gone to a show in so long that it wasn't worthwhile to buy one. The noise oh. sensitivity, because I get so noise yeah. sensitive when I get my migraines in particular, that like going out anywhere... And I keep my headphones in almost all the time now when mm -hmm. I'm out and about just to listen to a podcast or something. Same. Um, because. Oh, sorry. It's just reading Zach's message. Um, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wish that those were a thing back when, like, Matt was first diagnosed with the spectrum yeah. because of his uh, processing disorders and just you get that like um uh, the word can't think of the right fucking word now it's gonna drive me crazy um overstimulation uh you know oh yeah yeah i mean and i get like that and i'm at least not that i know of on the but i like that you can I yeah, like there are different these, like man. levels of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, shout out to Loop. Like, if y'all want to sponsor yeah. us, hell let me yeah! Know. I already paid for this okay. with my own money. 
with your um, very you sponsor, own money. So and they're not yeah. crazy expensive. They're really not that bad. Um, I mean, more Especially than I would expect like, to play reusable. for earplugs. Right, yeah. But yeah, they look super comfy, and then they have different mm-hmm. like levels. They, I mean, the pros are like forty bucks, but right. So yeah. like, it comes like in this little package, and they come with like different sizes. So like, I have the extra smalls in right now. It comes with like extra small, small, medium, which are I have like right. just lying around because there's no spot for it. They came like pre-installed on the plugs. And right. then large as well. So you have like different shapes so that it'll fit like your ear canal, which right. I think is really nice. Like a lot of a lot of um, earbud companies do this. Like it's a super popular thing. Right. But I've never seen them include like extra small. Usually it's only three sizes. Yeah. And so I always have trouble because my... it's like my ears are surprisingly tiny. Um, I was impressed with Raycon when I got my Raycons because yeah. they had the set that came on them and then like three additional ones so it was a total of four sizes that you could pick from yeah Um, i like that and then be able to change them out yeah i wish there was a way that you could like order the size that you need especially if like you already are familiar with their sizing you know which one's gonna fit because i do think it is a waste to have like this much excess like right yeah you know what i mean but at the same time that would be, I think, more difficult to navigate. And you're going to have people who are going to order their own size and then complain about it. So I totally get it. Um, But yeah, I really, really like it so far. I had it in for a little while this afternoon while I was just like working. And it was really kind of peaceful. Although my thoughts are louder when I wear it. That sounds so weird to say. Because I can hear less outside stuff. I'm hearing more inside stuff. Yeah. And so some days that's not going to be good for me. (laughs) Right. So it's going to be very bad for me um, as a person. Uh, so <laughs> I completely get that. Yeah. But I, I like it. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah. So yeah. Those are cool. Right? Very cool. Well, yeah, you'll have to let us know what you think of them. I definitely will. I'll have to update you guys next week as to, like, how it went. I probably won't wear them every night. Um, just cause I don't always have a need to, and I'm not going to wear it unless I need to wear it. Um, but I'm curious to see if it changes like how I sleep. Cause I'm a very fitful sleeper. I wake up a lot. Yeah. So I wonder if this will help me sleep better. Cause it'll be blocking out more noise. Yeah. So, we'll see. Time will tell. Can I just you know? sleep with my Raycons in and listen to scary story yeah. narrators? Cause I'm a fucked up person on the inside. But, um, <laughs> It's weird, like, because if it doesn't, if YouTube doesn't, like, automatically play the next video or something happens and I wake up and it's quiet, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> See, I sleep with them, and, like, these, they look relatively, like, flush to my ear. Yeah. But these hurt so much to lay on. Like, I couldn't imagine sleeping yeah. with earbuds and, or, like, my you know, over the ear um don't but I tried initially when I still just had airpods and those like I'd get pimples in my yeah. ear if I laid it and my other cheap set I have I can switch like no matter like if I flip over I can just switch the you know even though it's the wrong ear it's not terribly mm-hmm. uncomfortable um but it's bigger like that when I can't lay it I can't have it in the, whichever ear is down because I'm a side sleeper so me too yeah yeah, if I was a back sleeper, it'd be one thing. I can't be totally back different. because I choke myself out. But... Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I'm a side sleeper. Yeah, yeah. And otherwise, it's just more uncomfortable. I think I yeah. end up with other pain issues. I uh, I agree. Don't sleep on my side. Yeah. Well. That's Do you want to get started with some mm-hmm. Am I Asshole? Yeah. All right. Always. Um, so I guess I'll go first. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Am I the asshole for not inviting my stepmom to wedding prep activities and not including her in the wedding party? Mm-hmm. I, 26 female, am getting married soon. My parents, 54 female and 55 male, split when I was super young. And my stepmom, Haley, 48 female, has been in my life since I can remember. 
She's basically a second mom to me and has treated me the same as my siblings, technically my half-siblings, even Mm -hmm. though I spent weekends with my mom. My mother is pretty argumentative and has always disliked Haley for some reason. She explained that Haley overstepped a lot of boundaries when she came around, but my dad said it was a lot of misunderstandings and feelings that just got in the way. He doesn't talk about my mom much unless I ask specific questions. My mom, however, is the opposite and just says what's on her mind. With my wedding coming up, I plan to include Haley as one of my parents in the wedding party. I wanted to treat Haley the same as I would treat a bio parent because that's basically what she's been. Haley cried when I told her this and was so excited, saying she can't wait to help me pick out a dress and all the other things that go with the wedding. My dad and Haley's wedding was like a dream, and I hope mine is just like theirs. My bio parents never married, and my mom told me she left him when I was super young. When I told my mom, she flipped on me, saying Haley is not my mother, and it's disrespectful to, quote, downplay my real mom by including Haley in real parent things. She said Haley has always inserted herself in real parent matters, and now she's, quote, taking her only baby's wedding from her. My mom started crying and begging me not to let Haley do this. I felt bad. Haley does have other children with my father and will have a chance to be in the other kids' weddings. My sister just got engaged not too long after me, so she won't miss out. When I talked to Haley about this, she seemed really sad but kind of played it off and said she understands and just wants me to be happy. My dad pulled me aside and said it's my wedding, but it would really be messed up to kick Haley out of the wedding when she has been a mother to me since I was a baby, which she has. I don't know what to do. My mom is hurting, but so is Haley. Wedding dress shopping is coming up this weekend, and I want Haley to be there, but my mom said she won't come if I invite her because she can't be around Haley and watch her steal this moment. My fiancé says he thinks my mom is being petty, as per usual, but his parents are together, and he's never had to deal with this dynamic, so am I the asshole. Thoughts. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. Um, it's hard. Like, I'm usually the type of person that I go, it's your wedding. Do what you want to do, you know, like. Mm Mm-hmm. But it's also, like, it's one of those where, why can't everybody just fucking get along? Like. Like, he says he would have to probably go a few times to register everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the problem that I have with it is that she, her initial reaction was to invite Haley, was to invite the stepmom. Because she's an important figure in her life, and her biological mother was like, this is hurtful to me that you would invite her. She's overstepping and trying to be involved where she shouldn't be. And that's a part that I have a huge issue with because while I understand that the mother's feelings are hurt, like it's been, you know, 20 plus years at this point. And understandably feelings can last however long they last, but at the same time, I don't know. I just always felt like parents who divorce shouldn't be trying to prevent their kid from right. finding happiness with the spouses that they then remarry. It's like right. the easiest thing for everybody if everyone gets along well enough so there aren't issues. You know what I mean? Sometimes right. that doesn't happen because of circumstances, and I totally get that. But at the same time, it doesn't sound like the mother's never provided any concrete proof as to what happened in order to warrant her still being pissed off at this woman right. 20 years down the line. Right. Um, other than that, like, she's definitely younger you know what I mean? She's 48, the dad's 55, so there's a seven-year age gap. So it might be a lot of, like, I, just truthfully, like, female jealousy of he left me for a younger model, which I totally get, but they were also never married, and the mom claims she's the one that broke it off. So it just seems like a huge ball of yuck to me. And yeah. I think that the daughter's 100% an asshole for being like, oof, sorry, my real mom said that she doesn't like yeah. you, and so you can't be a part of my wedding. I just feel right. like that's shitty. You had already invited her. You need to have a come to Jesus yeah. with your mom. You're like, look, right. I understand you feel some type of way about it. And we will work to make sure that we're very clear that, you know, Haley is my stepmom and you are my mother, the woman who birthed me, the woman who, you know, all that kind of stuff. But like, she deserves to be a part of this day too, because she did raise me Monday through Friday for, you know, right. however many years. Right. I don't know. That's tough. It just, to me, it's like the mom, 
I get being pissed, like you said, like I can be pissed, but 20 years later and like bite your tongue, get through the day for the sake of your daughter. Like mm-hmm. the stepmom's important to her too. It's not saying that mom's not important. Right. The stepmom is also important, you know, and I, I think that right. that's important. I just, I've always had the mentality of like, after my divorce, like the more people that love my kid and can help influence him and give him advice, whatever, the better, you know? So I just don't, I hate people that put their kids in the middle of bullshit and they're, this mom is still putting their kid in the middle of it and their kid is an adult. And so as an adult, she needs to say like, no, this is my day. Mm -hmm. And like, I, but there's so many stories on here about you know, parents that still can't get along or step parents or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, just fucking put your shit aside for right. one day because it means something to your kid, you know? And like to be like, I'm not going to come to your like wedding dress shopping, which like as women, we know that's a huge moment. It's like finding your dress. You always want to have like yeah. your mom or like very close female friends with you or even right. some male friends too. Like you do you. Um, yeah. but like, it's such an important day. And so to be like, I'm not going to show up if you continue to invite her, that's just so shitty. Like making your daughter make that choice is awful. You know what I mean? Like, why should she have to choose? And also it reminds me of that, like parable of like the, um, two women go to King Solomon or whatever. And are like, Hey, this is my baby. She won't give me my baby back, but it's mm-hmm. mine. They're both claiming to be the mother. And so his solution, he goes, okay, great. We'll just cut the baby in half. And the one mother's like, great, that's a perfect solution. And the one who's probably the real mother's like, are you fucking kidding me? You can't cut a baby in half. Like, mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. This reminds me so much of that. Like, the one who is like, you can't cut a baby in half is Haley, who's like, I totally get it. Like, you know, I don't want to overstep or whatever. And the one that's like, yeah, great. We'll just cut the baby in half is her, like, real mom who's like, no fuck her. I don't want to see her. Right. Be miserable on your day because now you have to uninvite somebody that was important in your life to your wedding. Like, I just don't get it. And I think that like weird little line too there at the end where she says, my fiance thinks my mom is being petty, but his parents are together. So he's never had to deal with this dynamic. I'm like, well, first of all, that's really dismissive. There are plenty of people whose parents are still together and have to deal with this dynamic. Absolutely. That's very much a thing. So to say that is super dismissive is also dismissive anyway, just to be like, because his parents are split, he couldn't possibly understand. I think that that makes him seem unintelligent for no reason. Like plenty of people are understanding the the situation. I just think that you aren't ready for what he has to say. You know what I mean? Right. He's telling you like your mom's being toxic and you're like, well, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So. And yeah, pretty much everyone agreed that either she's not the asshole or that OP kind of is the asshole a little bit since she rescinded an invitation when it was so clear that her mom, her stepmom, like right. cared so much. Like that's a little bit of an asshole move. Yeah. Um, and that the mom is definitely being an asshole. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Um. So this one is, am I the asshole for giving my male friend an audiobook with my own voice? I was going to read this one too. I'm so glad you picked it. Because <laughs> I was between a couple and I was like, I need this one to be read because it's okay. so interesting. But right? I'm so glad you did this. Okay. Um, so I, <laughs> female 18, have a friend, Tom, male 18, who has a girlfriend, Anna, female 19. I've known pa- Tom since we were both 13. Our friendship isn't and never was sexual or romantic in any way. And yes, I'm sure there was or is no one-sided crush on his part. (laughs) So for some reason, Tom enjoys listening to my voice. I really don't know why. I hate to listen to my own recordings, but he thinks it's soothing. Right? Big same. Uh, Ever since I can remember... He has had a bad case of insomnia, and when we were younger, he used to call me, and I would just talk some nonsense until he fell asleep. Nowadays, he also does once in a while, but only when things are really bad for him. 
It's weird, but I know how deteriorating sleep problems can be, so I really don't mind. Tom is also a big fan of Harry Potter, of the Harry Potter series. So for his 18th birthday, I made him audiobooks. I recorded everything myself. It literally took dozens of hours of recording and even more when it comes to editing, adding music, and so on. But it was worth it as an 18th birthday is kind of a big deal after all, at least in our mm-hmm. country. And I had no money to buy him a really good or big present. He was thrilled, and so I thought that it was a good idea after all. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Um, however, if you're glad you had the time to read all seven books. Insane. Right? Right. Insane. And it sounds like this is a legitimate, like, right. She something that, it. yeah, this friend is going to like be able to use consistently for a long time, especially if things mm-hmm. are bad. Um, yeah. And like I was saying earlier, I listen to narrators to fall asleep. So I totally get like finding somebody's voice that you just really mm-hmm. like. And they could read the phone book and I could care less. Like I'd still be right. able to fall asleep too. Um, anyway, so it says, however, a few days later, Anna called me very angry and accused me that I was trying to steal Tom for myself. I definitely don't. Saying that okay. I, <laughs> that, um. Uh, she accused me that I try to steal Tom for myself. Yeah. It says in parentheses, I definitely don't. Saying I behave yeah. creepily and I severely crossed the line, giving him something so personal. I never wanted to put a damper on their relationship. I only wanted to make something special for my friend's important day. I tried to explain it to her, but she was only shouting at me and told me that I had to take the recordings back and give Tom a quote unquote normal present. I refused because, in my opinion, the only person who has a saying in this matter is Tom himself. Long story short, it turned into a huge drama because she tried to set some of our mutual friends against me because of it. Most of them agree with me, but some think that what I did really was weird, not because of the present itself, but because Tom is in a relationship. Am I the asshole? So here's the thing. As someone... (laughs) Um, like as a a woman who's been in relationships, I can definitely see where you could have like the feeling of like, this is weird, right? Like you're sending him your voice to fall asleep to. Right. But at the same time, if it's a longstanding friendship, and again, they've been friends, she said for, I don't remember how long, but like years and years. Since since they were 13 and they're 18. Like they're, it's like over five five years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's a significant there, amount of nothing time. Nothing has happened yet. If no one has declared feelings or any of that, then it more than likely is just a true like friendship kind of a situation. Mm-hmm. And some people do just have really nice voices. Like there are one hundred percent people in my life that I have had no desire to fuck, but I would definitely listen to them talk to me for three hours uninterrupted. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So like I yep. can totally see that. I can also see how the girlfriend would feel insecure about it. But, like, that to me sounds like that's a conversation for the girlfriend and the boyfriend to have, and you didn't need to involve this other person who did a really, really nice fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. Again, to record all of the Harry Potter novels, which are fucking forever long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to record all that, edit it, put music behind it, put sound effects Yeah, that's huge. Like, that's a huge time commitment. Yeah. Like... That's really like, fucked what? up for you to be like, you need to take it back. Also, how are you going to take that back? You know what I mean? Right. Right. So how does and that it's work? Just like, that's, it's just, what a nice fucking thing for her to do. Like, that's just yeah. a brilliant, great idea. And it, mm-hmm. <laughs> it wouldn't. Um, Right. No, and it definitely sounds like she is um a little bit jealous and I get that. But at the yeah. same time it's not I mean, let her listen to the recording because it's not like she's trying to subliminally, you know, right. send messages like you love me, not her, blah 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 bullshit. Like there is well, no game yeah. here. She just literally thought of something very nice to do for her friend. That took a lot of time. I think it's also like the book itself makes a difference. Like she's reading Harry Potter. Yeah. She's not reading a a Court of Thorns and Roses, like, which is smut. You know what I mean? It's a story about fantasy characters fucking. 
Like, that would be different right. if she recorded something that was, like, overtly sexual. Right. Harry Potter's a right. story about, like, teenagers in high school, essentially. Like, acting like adults. But you know what I'm saying. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. Not, it's not as if she did Fifty Shades of Grey. That would be different. Right. And that would totally cross a line from Jump. But this is, like, I'm assuming Harry Potter, they're a fan of it, right? She's not just recording some random story. Right. Um, I definitely did this for a friend once who admittedly at one point in time we were in love. So like that's a different layer, but um, he needed some help falling asleep. And so he would call me up and I read Edgar Allan Poe to him as yeah. he fell asleep, which right. he very much enjoyed that. Um, but again, right. that would be different if I did it because of the dynamics that we had previously, like that would be a little bit right. sus if you were to call me right. up now like being in a right. very committed relationship i'd be like bruh <laughs> what are you doing right right yeah. yeah i mean and it's but this is something and this stops some of those like middle of the night phone calls then like i right as a girlfriend like that would upset me more in particular like oh if he's calling you instead of calling me in the middle of the night when he can't sleep like that would mm-hmm. upset me more but i'm also a jealous bitch we know this um but it right know. just listening to like an audiobook of their voice again yeah. if they have a really soothing voice or you know right. i mean some people just have naturally like, very pleasant Zach has very sound. nice voice. you and i were talking about this the other day yeah, we were. Like, <laughs> we Zach were totally has great voice. exactly where like dave does too but dave's so much more animated that like to fall asleep it's not a good falling asleep voice. Right, yeah. It, it's too entertaining. I, I'm going to stay awake too long. Whereas, right. sorry, Zach, don't take offense to this, but listening to your voice, like, I could eventually just fall asleep because it's so rhythmic. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just a different thing. And even when he's animated, there's still, like... Right. Um, it's hard to describe, but it's yeah. it would be something that I could imagine someone would be like, yeah, I would like to fall asleep to that. Right, yeah. like On an audiobook. Okay, talk about quantum physics i don't care it can be shit that i don't <laughs> understand i just right. need the background noise and something rhythmic and and life is like that yeah um, hey chris you should maybe yeah. look into getting a pair of uh loops. you should Again, loop. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm not here but, uh, boyfriend yeah. snoring next to you or right. the noisy neighbors upstairs who consistently try to kill each other Loop has you covered. One o'clock in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I totally wanted to read this one too, so I'm so glad you did. I was like, I can see, I can see both sides of it. I can see how that would make the girlfriend feel insecure or whatever. I think the girlfriend crossed the line by saying, like, you need to take it back. Yeah, yeah, don't take it back. Like a heartfelt gift, like that's fucked up. But like, and somebody yeah, in the comments was like, clearly this out like shined the girlfriend's gift, and she's probably mm-hmm. upset because it was a better gift. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everybody else is like getting back into the conversation of like, can right. men and women be platonic friends? Or which I mean, we've already discussed. I think absolutely they can. There are definitely absolutely. instances that I myself have been in. But there are also instances where it's like, absolutely not. I can never be pl- only platonic with this person because there's always yeah. going to be some sort of like, you know, unresolved issue here. Yeah. So. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. It's not hard. We're like. <laughs> Just a soft, gentle nudge. I right. mean, I don't want to do that either because Christian's a big fella. Like. He's like, I mean, he's linebacker kind of, you know what I mean? He's tall. He's got broad shoulders. I'd be afraid that he would accidentally swat at me, like swatting a fly and like break my nose. Totally on accident, but like just a natural response. Right. All right. Am I the asshole for telling my nephew I'm ashamed of him and the rest of the family? Which like this headline alone, I was like, Jesus Christ. But let's get I into am. it because it Hi. goes somewhere. Right. Um, so he said, I'm here to find out the truth about this situation. I, 31 male, am married to my wife, Ella, 31 female. We have three children together. Our son is seven, and our daughters are four and two. A few months ago, we learned Ella's sister had a child and that her child had been removed from the home. 
Ella was contacted about taking in her nephew, Dex, who is also seven. Despite the shock and us not knowing said nephew, we chose to bring him into our home in an effort to give him the life that Ella and her sister did not have. I never expected us taking my nephew in to be a problem, but my family were vocal about us not taking in the nephew. This is where I should mention that I am black and my wife is white. Our kids together are dark-skinned like me, but Dex is white like my wife. Ella's sister and Dex's mom was involved in illegal activities, which contributed to Dex's removal. My family acted as though Dex was somehow responsible and doomed, and they told me it was selfish to bring him into a house with my children, who will always get the blame for his actions. I was pissed. Dex is seven. Our kids love him, and they and he's already bonded so well with them. He's little, but they treat him like a criminal. They refused to include him in the family, and they told me he would not be welcome at any family events. So I chose to cut my family out of my life. I told them I would not turn my back on a child who has nobody else and who has, excuse me, done nothing to deserve abandonment. One of my nephews is 15 and got in touch with me recently to talk. He said he missed me and his cousins and hated that we didn't see each other. I told him that I missed him too and explained that adult issues were complicated sometimes and hopefully we could see, so we could see each other soon. He told me that I could see them if I kicked Dex out so that we could see each other and that Dex is just trouble, that he doesn't deserve to tear our family apart. I told him Dex is a child who has nobody else, and he told me that he's going to be the reason my kids end up in jail and maybe even me too, to which I told him that's ridiculous. He told me that I was being dumb and it was embarrassing to watch, and then said fuck Dex, he doesn't matter, and things like that. That's when I absolutely snapped. I told him I was ashamed of how he talked about an innocent kid, and I was ashamed of the rest of the family who would put so much on a seven-year-old child. I told him I would not dump Dex for them, and that it only added to how ashamed I was to have him request that repeatedly. My nephew ended the call, and straight afterward, I got a message from my sister that I had no right to talk to her child that way. Then the rest of the family joined in. And I can't stop asking myself if I was wrong to say this to my nephew, who is a 15-year-old kid. I asked myself if ending the call would have been better because dumping on a kid is perhaps not my finest moment. Am I the asshole? I also had to switch my headphones during part of that. Okay. So I missed some of it. So uh, basically the TLDR is that the wife, the husband is black, the wife is white. Right. The wife's sister had a kid, had a kid who then had to get removed from the home because right. the wife's sister was doing illegal activities. And of her various... mom, right? So wife's uh, sister and well, mom were doing less. The, the parents didn't really give the wife and the wife's sister a great upbringing. So they right. were like, we'll take the nephew in because we want him to have a life that we can have because we're a very functional home. Um so we're going to bring him in. His family got pissed saying that they're inviting trouble into their home because he was raised for seven years by a criminal. That means he's a criminal too. Um, right. And so the, one of his nephews who's 15 called him up after not having talked for weeks at a time. Cause he cut his family off and was like, Hey, I miss you. And he was like, yeah, I miss you too, bud. And he was like, you should dump decks. Like you should give him away because he's worthless. Fuck that kid. Like all this stuff. And that's when he was like, I'm ashamed that you're my family if that's how you're talking. Like, we yeah. don't need. And so he kind of, like, snapped him a little bit and talked about how disappointed and ashamed and how, like, ridiculous it was. So the kid hung up, and then the sister texted him and was like, don't you dare talk to my kid that way. And so now right. OP is asking, like, was that wrong of me to talk to him like that? Which, I mean, the thing is, I can tell OP has a genuine heart because they're asking genuinely, like, I said something to a 15-year-old that would be considered maybe not appropriate by telling them like how ashamed I am, how like not a great family it is, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I, that's so hard because that 15 year old was talking about a seven year old, like they're a 30 year old career criminal. You know what I mean? Like that's so hard for, I, I would be in the same position. I would have said the same fucking shit, to be honest. If someone came to me and it was like, hey, you need to take in your sibling's kid. Like, they've, you know, they've been removed from their home. CPS removed them from their home because of activities happening in the home. Now they have nobody. You're the only person we can contact. And your family's like, ooh, yeah, you don't want to, like, do that. I'd be pissed. And yeah, I'm so proud of OP for too. cutting his family out. If they're like, you're not invited to any family events if he's coming. 
Like, yeah. that's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's at the end of the day, just because the kid grew up in a certain environment. I mean, and what, this kid is seven years old, right? Seven. Yeah. Like, just because he grew up in that environment does not mean that that's who he is. Mm-hmm. You know, as a person, it's not, you know, like he's already been getting into trouble and like been in juvie, you know, kind right. of situation. And even that, I, I don't know that I would be against like turning or I would be against taking them in. Um, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's just standing up and saying that he's going to give this kid a, a safe place to live. And I think that that's the most important thing to do right. for this child at this point absolutely um yeah i mean i think the biggest problem is like the you know him telling a seven a 15 year old that it's shameful but um as one of the one commenter said it's funny how your family thinks that grown-ass adults calling a seven-year-old child all kinds of nasty names and criminalizing him for absolutely no reason is okay but you telling right. a 15 year old that you're ashamed of him is the outrageous thing yeah yeah. It's like, yeah, that's it. I mean, Nailed it. Awful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly, Chris. Like, he's yeah. still a kid. The kid has not And unless anything. Dex has given a reason for you to think that, like, unless, you know, he's been caught stealing in your home or whatever, or right. like, you know what I mean? Unless you catch him in lies every five seconds, you have no reason to say that. You're just basing that off of randomness. And I also thought it was super weird that the family even said, um that it's selfish to bring him in because like your biological children will always get the blame for his actions and i was like that's also an insult to your parenting that you think that i can't tell the difference between who did what like i mean i grew up with siblings were there times that we blame shit on the other sibling and got away with it fucking hundred percent right were there times that my parents were like danny you're full of shit like i know that you're the one that did this don't yeah don't even bother. Go to your room. Absolutely. Right. Right. Like there are times when you absolutely know which kid did what. So to right. be like, you're going to blame your biological children for shit he did. Like that's such an insulting thing to say to a parent, I think. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. I agree. It's, it's at the end of the day, you can't blame a kid for it. No, absolutely not. Uh, okay, so my next one is, am I the asshole for siding with my mom over my wife and telling my wife it was her fault for putting me on the spot? So it's my wife and I'm I curious always to hear try... the story because I want to say yes. <laughs> right. Um, my wife and I always try to side with each other in public. And if there is an issue, we talk it out in private. So maybe I fucked up here. Right, Chris? My mom lives an eight-hour plane ride away, so if she's going to visit, it's going to be for at least four to five days to make it worth it. My mom is the one who moved, and my wife made it clear when she moved that she needs to be the one to come to us as she made the choice to move. Doesn't have small kids and has the ability to work when she wants with no set schedule. My mom rolled her eyes but agreed. My wife also told me that we would not be altering our lives to revolve around mom. Well, she is welcome to visit. We will not use up our limited vacation time, which we want to use to do things with our kids, and it isn't our job to entertain her. It felt, I felt weird about it, but I agreed. My mom visited one time, three years ago. We went to work as normal, and she was alone in the house during the day. By the time we got home, she was clearly bouncing off the walls and about to lose it. We did our normal chores routine, though my wife did take over some of my duties so that I could visit with her. We had our normal blah weeknight meals, and by the end of the trip, my mom was clearly miserable, overtired, and starving. She just didn't eat much. I don't know why. Um, She didn't complain, but she seemed pissy. And then COVID happened. Both of us were busy, and we just didn't see each other. We recently invited her to visit again, And my mom said, sorry, but no. She said it was torture, and if we can't put the effort in to host her, then she isn't coming. I felt like that was fair, as she didn't make any demands on us. She just chose not to come, but my wife was very upset. 
my wife wanted me to confront her about how entitled she was being. I refused. So she called my mom and accused her of being childish and needing constant entertainment. My mom and her got into it with my mom yelling that we were shit hosts and she was so bored she actually cried one day. She said she doesn't owe us her time if we don't want to put time into her. And she will never visit again unless something changes. But we have an open invitation to visit her. My wife asked me if I was going to get involved. My mom said that I need to get my wife to stop attacking her. My wife demanded to know whose side I was on, and I said my mom's. My mom began laughing. Okay, that's kind of, but also funny. Yeah. Um, my wife teared up and hung up. She now feels that I betrayed her and that I'm a mama's boy. And then it says, what the fuck? I haven't even seen her in three years. I told her it was her fault for putting me on the spot. And I just think my mom is entitled to the boundary of she doesn't want to visit. Sucks. Okay, so my initial reaction, I'm going to walk back. Because yeah. I think this is super complicated. Yeah. For one, like, I can understand setting some boundaries in terms of, like, you know, we're not going to change our life when you get here. Like, you moved out of state, not us. We're not going to take additional time off to come see you because we don't have that much vacation time. Like, right. I can totally get behind a right. lot of that. I really yeah. can. Yeah. However, at the same time, if you have someone coming to, like, stay at your house and you're gonna be like gone for a portion of the day and they're like left alone I've had this before with like you know my brother coming to visit or whatever then it's like you set them up with stuff to do you know what right. I mean you're like yeah. hey you know here's all the logins for Netflix and Hulu and this and that and the other right you make sure that they have a way to get to and from places I would never like if they're flying in then they don't have a car I would right. try and either leave them with my car or rent a car for them for the week so they can go out and do shit on their own and not just be stuck in my place because, yeah, right. they're going to be bored out of their fucking mind. It's not their right. home. They're not comfortable in it. Yeah. Like, there's a lot there. To say that they then came home and, like, did their normal chores and ate normal meals, that I think is fucked up, too. Like, yeah, it's not a vacation, but, like, take your fucking mom out to dinner. Take your mother-in-law right. yeah, out to dinner. Yeah, do something special. Like, right. I get, you know, not being able to take extra time off, um, especially right. with some workplaces, you just can't. But you no. can still make her feel desired, like, as a guest, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. So know, that's where it's like, it. I can totally understand that the mom was like, no, I'm not signing up for that again to just sit around your house for a fucking week while you're at work and the right. kids are in school. And, right. Like, where's the joy in that for me? Right. Like, and I don't think that the mom should have, or the wife should have gone around the husband and been like, no. I'm going to confront your mom since you won't. Yeah. Like, she should be visiting us when we offer the invitation. That's entitlement too, hon. Like, exactly. to just assume that when you say, come over, someone's going to do it. Right. Yeah. Like, no, no, that's not how that works. Yeah. Now, she definitely shouldn't have put him on the spot. And he definitely shouldn't have said, I'm siding with my mom. He should have been like, why don't we hang up? And you and I can discuss our feelings right. on the you issue. Know. And then, like, we'll go from there. Right. Um, that was definitely a bonehead move to be like, yeah, I side with my mom while they're yeah. on the phone. Like, that's not. Well, that's well, not and I think the wife, you know, the wife being in control of the phone call. And mm -hmm. then, but demanding to know whose side she was on. Hey, Nux. Nux, good to see you. Um, right. But... I mean, and, and I think they both have good points that they are making. Yeah. Um, right. But all in all, I don't think he's, he's even the asshole for siding with his mom and telling her that. Um, yeah. I would be okay with that because maybe that's what the wife needs to hear in order. I just think that mom yeah. laughing probably is what made it Does the worst. Help. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that, like, he couldn't have sided with his mom because, again, right. I think the mom's pretty much right. Like, you don't spend a week at somebody's house and do, like, normal everyday stuff. Like, when right. I go visit my friends, like, we do fun shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even I was visiting a friend when over the summer when we were both in college and she had to work during the day for, like, 
I mean, it wasn't a full work day. It was still like basically working a half day. And so right. like, I stayed at her parents' house and like just got, I got to sleep in and I got to do other stuff, but she always made sure that like I had something to do, that something was set up or that I knew like what was in the area and I could get around and stuff because yeah, it's really fucking boring being at somebody else's house alone. Right. So, right. Um, I don't think OP is the asshole. I think he could have handled it more diplomatically. Right. I think the wife needs to take a chill pill and reassess what she thinks visitors are like the point of a visitor is in your house. Right. You fucking weirdo. Take somebody out to dinner for Christ's sakes. Don't yeah, just cook fucking Yeah, it's not that hard to do shit at something home. fun, you know. Yeah. Or, like, plan to go, like, see a movie or something one right. of those nights. Take, or, you know what I mean? There's you know, stuff maybe to don't do take the night. whole day off, but leave early so that early. you can spend yeah. some, yeah. And yeah. also, like, maybe it's just me, but I'm the kind of person, like, the only choice, chores that need to get done while someone's visiting are, like, dishes so that, you know, right. A, it doesn't cause a problem, but B, so you have shit to eat off of. Well, like, and, like, I mean, shit, the, like, shit, like, cleaning you don't up the vacuum. kids' room and, you know, I mean, getting the kids bathe, whatever, like, that I can consider normal, like, right. evening routine stuff that won't change. Um, right. That you would do, even if you were on vacation, you would still need to bathe them and do all that. Right. Content. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Any. Wow. All right. This next one, I think, is just really fucking funny. Um, okay. So if I suddenly start laughing in the middle of it, it's because, yeah, you'll see. Am I the asshole for accidentally embarrassing my roommate on a Zoom call? I, female 22, live with three roommates in a shared house. After someone moved out, we had a new roommate move in a month ago, Jesse, female 26. Jesse seemed okay at first, but there's a small but gross problem, though. We share one bathroom, and me and my other roommates notice that Jesse never flushes the toilet and never is in bold. <laughs> We thought that maybe Jesse is just forgetful or some eco warrior trying to save water. One of my roommates confronted Jesse and she just changed the subject and then it got really fucking awkward. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon I went into the bathroom <laughs> I went into the bathroom and found a pile of shit in the toilet with skitters all around it. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Wow. I'm just imagining like, the worst scene possible. Anyway, without really thinking, I yelled at the top of my lungs, Jesse, can you please flush the toilet after you used it? This is disgusting. <laughs> I didn't hear a reply and just went about the rest of my day. Well, okay. later that evening, Jesse told me that she was on a Zoom meeting with her boss <gasps> in her room and that the boss overheard it. She was really mad and said I embarrassed her, and I apologized for embarrassing her. I had no idea that she was on a Zoom call, and I wouldn't have done it if I had known. Jesse, Jesse is super angry and is acting very passive-aggressive towards me and the other roommates. But she's also still not flushing the toilet. Yeah. And I have no idea why she doesn't flush it. At this point, I'm just plain afraid to ask. <laughs> Me. I'd be My other that. roommates think that what I did was stupid and that I was being a jerk, and I told some friends about this, and they think that Jesse deserved to be embarrassed. So was I the asshole? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because Not like, what the all. fuck? Like, right? What? I mean, I have we have so all many had concerns. Their... I have, I have an abundance of concerns as well. My thing is, we've all had our moments where we can't flush the toilet for one reason or another. Right. Like, oh, totally. You totally. know what I mean? Right. Shit happens. However, <laughs> I'm not letting my shit sit there for an undetermined amount of time, especially if I've taken a gnarly ass shit that's left marks all over the toilet bowl and a literal pile of shit. Like, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. Yeah. And the fact that, like, they asked her, like, <laughs> you know, why do you do this? And she was just like, so anyways, I was talking to Sam the other day. You know what I mean? She just changed the subject and then it got super awkward. Like, there's a reason she's not flushing the toilet. And that's super fucking weird. And now I'm thinking, like, if I ever have to have a roommate, that's going to be question numero uno. Do you fucking flush the toilet? 
Like, doesn't matter yeah. number one or number two, are you flushing? Because, like, like the bitch and needs none to of know. this, if it's yellow, let it mellow bullshit. Like, no, I want you to flush every goddamn time unless <laughs> right. you're in a goddamn drought. Like, well, so I'm gonna be real with you for a second. There have 100% been times that I've been on the phone with people and I've needed to use the bathroom. Right. And so I'll oh, yeah. go to the bathroom, put myself yeah. on mute, and then I won't yeah. flush the toilet until we're done with the call because I don't want them to hear the water running which in totally my small makes ass sense, apartment. You know, which is fine. But like that happens so irregularly. And again, I'm living by myself. I would never do that if I had roommates. Right. I would figure out. A, I would hang up and call them back. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, like, and I can yellow, see, you know, muting while you're using the bathroom, unmute, thing. say something, get them talking again, <laughs> then mute, yeah. flush, wash your hands, whatever. But right. but to just leave it there? And, like, I can understand uh, her being upset. It is an actual saying, Chris. Right? I can see her being upset blockers. that um, the boss overheard, but at the same time, like, you walked your ass right into that. By taking right. a nasty old shit and leaving it for your roommates to find. Fuck. Like, not expecting them to say anything. Like, right. that's dumb. Right. You know what I mean? Play stupid yeah. games, win stupid prizes. Now your boss knows you don't fucking flush. <laughs> like. <laughs> and, like, what? Like, what? What are you? <laughs> Steve, stop. Um. Like, I fuck, I don't even... What is the benefit of not flushing? Like, why would you not? I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh, I know, I couldn't help myself. I could not get through this without laughing. I just don't understand so why... I don't either. I mean, I can totally... I definitely have known people that, like, like to show everybody what their asshole accomplished. And, like, if that's you, ha go for it. I don't know what to tell you. But, like, don't take a picture of that shit. Nobody needs to smell what your <laughs> asshole did. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's that's a bridge too far. Take a picture and post it on Reddit. I don't, I don't fucking care. Nobody needs to, like, let that shit linger in an enclosed space where other people bathe and brush yeah. their teeth. You know what I mean? Like, that's fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, Jesse is fucking weird. Yeah. I yeah. had to share that one with you guys, because when I, I saw it, I so died laughing. I thought that was so fucking funny. So amazing. Fucking, I'm glad yeah. I'm past, like, the uh, roommate <laughs> fucking bullshittery. Like, Ugh. I unfortunately did not because of college. I definitely had some roommate bullshittery, and we can definitely talk about it one day in the show. Oh, yeah. Um, but luckily, all of them knew how to use the fucking toilet. Uh, some people just didn't know how to, you know, replace toilet paper and stuff like that. So way less annoying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dave. Uh... Nice. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down there in the right. chat. Very nice. Well done. Yeah. Um. All right. So this one, how do you, uh, do you really good? Do you uh, take the thing Honestly, off, I, put it back on, can... put it back on the fucking holder, and then you shove a fist up your own asshole because you're a dick for not doing it before that. Yeah, 100%. What she said. <laughs> Got very aggressive, and I'm only slightly <laughs> sorry about it. Don't be even a little bit sorry. <laughs> that's amazing um, it did it did yeah. I have some real heated feelings about it because I live with right. uh, and work your own mouth like a goddamn fuck <laughs> it's not a good time Bob <laughs> um, <sighs> very entertained alright do you have your next one uh, yes it did. I see, see it? It did. It helped a lot. It did. It did. Uh, we look forward yeah. to developing one for the guys to go through as well. Oh, hell yeah. That'll okay. be a real fun time. So this one is, am I the asshole for refusing to pay rent towards my boyfriend's mortgage if I move in with him? My boyfriend, okay, 33 male. 
and I, 29 female, have been dating for three years. He owns a house and lives there by himself. I live in an apartment by myself. We've talked about moving in together, and as that's the logical next step in our relationship, and we both want to do it. But I do have some hang-ups in related to moving into a house that I don't have any stake in. I am refusing to pay any money that would go directly towards his mortgage. I don't have a, any stake in the house, so why would I contribute to his mortgage payment? I'm because okay you helping help me live with, there. Right. I'm okay helping with utilities, groceries, household items, etc., but paying the mortgage is a hard no for me. I just don't think it makes any sense for me to pay towards it. Okay, we get it. I don't think it makes any sense for me to um, pay towards his mortgage when I would get nothing from that if we were to break up. His argument is that I would essentially be living with him for free and would cause an uneven dynamic in our payment towards shared living expenses, which I do kind of get, but at the same time, he's the one benefiting from paying down the mortgage and gaining equity, not me. He also argued that his mortgage is pretty much exactly what I was paying in rent, so by cutting that in half, I'm still saving a lot of money on living costs compared to living on my own, which, yes, mm -hmm. that's nice too, but legally, it's still not my house. I told him the only way I pay money for rent is if he signs a contract with me stating that any money I pay towards his mortgage will be paid back to me by him in the event that we break up. Will no. also allow me protection from eviction and other basic tenant rights similar to a rental agreement. You don't get protection from eviction when you sign a rental agreement. Anyway. I mean, he is refusing, refusing to sign. Extent, right. But like, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, I have to say, uh, yeah. he's refusing to sign anything like that because, in his words, I could break up with him for no reason and then take him to court for thousands of dollars, which I suppose is true. It's very true. But I wouldn't just break mm -hmm. up with him for no reason. It doesn't matter. The whole Literally situation is driving a wedge between us, and he's pissed at me for being so difficult. When all he thinks he is asking is that we split living expenses 50-50 if we are to live together. To me, it's not that simple. When he's Brilliant. the one owning the house you would live in. If I were on the title, it would be a different story. But he's not willing to put me on the title because he's already lived there for seven years. So, yeah. My lease in my apartment is up in two months, and I know I need to make a decision sooner rather than later. It doesn't help that my landlord is going to be increasing my rent. And similar apartments in our area are going for even more than I'm currently paying, but I just don't feel right contributing money towards his mortgage. I also know that if I renew my lease, it's pretty much a dagger in our relationship, which I don't want because I do love him and do see a future with him, but I just want to make sure I'm protected. I can tell my boyfriend's patience on this is wearing, and he's upset with me for digging my heels in on this. Oh, shit. But for me, it's about protecting myself for the worst case scenario while he's not really risking anything. And I will, I want to read one of her responses um, before we okay. talk about it. Okay. Um, I'll be nice for a little bit longer. Yeah, just to, if I can find it again. Um, Because I definitely have some thoughts. And maybe she's going to address them. But, like... So far, right, the woman and basically, doesn't so that renting, um, the basically the comment was about the fact, like, it, it stems from a previous bad relationship where she was uh paying for everything and the other party took advantage of her for it, which I do understand, Been there, yeah. um, but you also oh, can't. It take it out on your new boyfriend because your ex-boyfriend was a dick ding 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 uh, we have a winner so yeah it's just one of those where like yeah you have to fucking pay for it you be you don't well, get a lot of the protection that she is asking for in a normal um well, the thing is, like, scenario if, anyway, so I don't understand. She's, why she's she currently renting. Either. She's currently right. paying her landlord's mortgage effectively, right? right? Like, right. depending on who she's 
purchasing it through. She's either paying a big fucking corporation who's taking advantage of her, or she's yeah. paying an individual who's also probably taking advantage of her because rent is out of control. The thing is, is that when your boyfriend is the one controlling it, and he's going to go halvesies with you on it. Yes, he owns it. But if you two were to move into a new location together, you'd still be paying that same fucking money. And it goes nowhere. Yes, it goes to him eventually owning the house and you won't get a part of that. But instead, you're willing to pay more to live in an apartment, which you will never, ever, ever have a possibility of owning. Versus right. moving in with him and then marrying him. You've already got a house, which, yes, you did invest in part in. And at what at that point in time, yeah, he you know, damn well better put you on the fucking lead, on the title. Right, right. yeah. Like, you know, at that's that such point, a ridiculous thing to say, to be like, I don't want to pay his way, that's silly. Yeah, like, it's just, you're not paying his way, like, no, you're, you're paying, paying for, for you to have a place to lay down of that space. Yeah. That's you so know? ridiculous. I would be just as pissed if I were the boyfriend, I'd be like, girl, you don't understand basic fucking economics. I don't know how I made it this far in life because this is yeah. this is day one shit. Also, I do entirely see her point about protections, right? Because there are certain things that you are protected by, like even if you, like your apartment cannot break your lease at any time. At least in my state, they have to give you at the very least a thirty day notice. Yep. So you're able to find other living arrangements. Yep. Now in my state as well, once you're a presumed a tenant, even without having a lease, there is restrictions on how many days until you can kick them out. You do have to serve them with notice and you do have to give them ample time to find a new property. But okay. it does differ if there's no written contract in place. And it's not that way in every state. So depending on what state she's in, she may have fewer protections. So it is in her best interest to still get him to sign a document saying like, hey, in the event of a breakup, I'm going to give you X amount of days to find new living arrangements. Right. I'm totally there for that. But there should be no talk of any protections of the money she spent, because either way, living in another apartment, whether she would have lived in the one she's currently in or moved to a different one, she's still throwing money in the fucking trash, essentially, because it's not going into a property and properties are too expensive to purchase. It, like, it's a whole thing. I totally get it. But you can't get that money back later on down the road. You can't ask for thousands upon thousands of dollars at a later date. Because y'all broke up. You can just ask that he doesn't kick you out right the fuck away. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This girl is dumb. And yeah. I hope she got read to fucking filth in these oh, comments. Oh, she did. She did. Good. And they found out that she, a month prior, well, so like 12 days prior to when that article was written, she wrote a different one. And was voted the asshole, and then basically just reworded it, dressed it up, changed her username, and reposted the article to hopefully get a different answer. Interesting, because she wanted to be able to prove she was right. Right. Yeah, and she wasn't. At no point in that entire thing was she on the right side of things. Right. Incredible. Yeah. Absolutely she incredible. Her cocoa puffs. Right. Also, I was just I just saw myself in the like screen on Twitch. And for whatever reason, this side of my hair looks super red, and this side of my hair looks super black. And it just, like, <laughs> the lighting in here is super funky. I did not pull a Harley Quinn and dye, like, half of my hair one color and half the other color. But now <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Because, honestly, it doesn't look awful. There you I go. I hate it. Right? All right, chat, I do need some help. I have two left, but I think we only have time for me to read one more. Tell me, pick a number between one and two, and that's what we're going to go with. Because I can't possibly decide. Um, and okay. so I'm putting that choice on you. Therefore, if you don't like the story, it's your own fucking fault. <laughs> Dave. <sighs> just a one or a two. Somebody give me something and I'll just go with that. Okay. Dave is saying one. Anybody else have a differing opinion? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay. One it is. All right. Am I the asshole for, oh, it looks like Chris agreed. Okay. Am I the asshole for taking back my husband's gift after he lost me a big promotion? Which off the title alone, I was like, nobody can lose you a promotion. When we get into the story, he lost her the promotion. Spoiler alert. All right. Um, names okay. are changed for obvious privacy reasons. 
Um, when I, a 32-year-old female, was a teenager, I had to go into foster care. The next few years were pretty bad, and I ended up doing some things that I am not proud of and getting myself into some serious legal trouble. I don't want to go into detail, but I shaped up and managed to avoid completely destroying my life. A few years later, I aged out and reunited with my older brother, who helped me get my record sealed. He also helped me get into college, and now I'm working in a field I'm passionate about in a job I love, where I then met my husband, 34 male. Yep. I've been up for promotion for three days, and it was more or less guaranteed until now. The weekend before the last, we had a work party during which my husband got to talking with our CEO, and after having a bit too much to drink, told him about my juvenile history. The next Monday, I got called in by my boss and was told my promotion would not be happening. I asked why they would do this, and he recounted my history to me in excruciating detail, to the extent that I couldn't even plead ignorance or claim it was untrue. He was sympathetic, but the higher-ups had made it clear that under no circumstances could I be rewarded due to the breach of trust on my part. When they hired me, I had said I had no record when I was interviewed. And due to the financial nature of some of my past mistakes. He said it was a leadership responsibility they were not ready to trust me with and that I could keep my job, but that was it. I was heartbroken and felt my husband betrayed me. We got into a massive fight and he apologized profusely and asked me to forgive him because he wasn't in his right mind. Yesterday, I canceled a very large debit transfer, which I had promised towards an expensive piece I was getting him as a gift for his timepiece collection. I had made the offer when I knew I would be getting a promotion, and now that I'm not getting my raise, I just don't want to take that much money out of my savings. He hit the roof when he found out, because he's now stuck with a huge bill and accused me of being petty and dishonest for continuing to punish him for a mistake that he has already apologized for. I told him that he should have thought of that before opening his mouth at the party, and he said that while he's sorry that I lost the promotion, I have enough savings to do the honorable thing and keep my promise. And that I, of all people, should understand the importance of forgiveness and second chances. I messed up and I paid for it. And I've worked really hard to forgive myself and to put my past behind me. I don't think it's fair that over a decade later, I'm still being punished for something that I've already paid for, even if he did so by accident. I don't think I'm the asshole given what he did, but he's currently not speaking to me and I could use some objectivity here. TLDR, am I the asshole for taking back a gift after my husband cost me the promotion that would have paid for said gift. She offered that she might be the asshole because she went back on her word when she could have just kept her promise and paid for the gift out of savings. It's possible that I'm being a hypocrite seeing as I was given a second chance when I messed up. So I might be coming too down, coming down too hard on him considering he made a stake and then apologized. Thoughts. The actual fuck. Right. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like. It, like. I, I have no words. I literally have no words. For the what? Right. That my brain is trying to process through right now. I mean, I totally get it that there's potentially another side to the story that we're not seeing. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. But at the same time, he definitely fucked up. I think it's pretty much an established thing that you don't talk about other people's criminal record, especially if you know it's a sealed record. Like, that's not something you do. You don't volunteer that information to anybody. And this is coming from someone who's had a ton <laughs> of interaction with the criminal justice system in my county because of like familial right. stuff. I would never ever tell people, especially people who are paying my wages or the wages of the person involved, what they did in a past life, unless, right. unless it is directly impacting the company. If I know for a fact that this person was previously charged for fraud and are now embezzling for the company, I would bring it up. Right. 100% yep. I would. Right. If they're not and they've turned their life around and it was dumb shit they did when they were fucking 17, I'm going to keep my mouth closed. Nobody needs to know that. And I get it that he was drunk, but at the same time, that's like a level of common sense that even when you're drunk, I think should still be there. 
You know what I mean? For them right. to have, for him to have given that much detail means it wasn't just like a, I said something stupid, and then realized it and went, oh fuck. No, he gave them the whole layout of the situation because right. they because it's a sealed record. the The company could not have gotten that information any other way, right? Other than reaching out to the parties involved, or in this case, having the husband spill the fucking can of beans. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It... I, if she does, if she's telling other people to make herself seem interesting, then it might just be a thing. Absolutely. But I think that that would probably have been said because she wouldn't be freaking out about it the way she is. And other people at the company would probably know. Right. Because he's the only one to have said anything to the bosses and that's how they found out about it. I highly doubt that she's going around telling people, Oh my God, you'll never believe what I was did what I did when I was younger. Like I, you know, carjacked somebody and took it on a joyride and then left right. it in the Walmart parking lot. You know what I mean? Like I doubt she's going around telling that because again, the only way it came out was immediately following a staff party where her husband talked to the CEO and then admitted that he told him this stuff. Right. So that to me is like the husband fucked up. Now, should she punish him in any other way? No, but also like if she promised to give him something because she was expecting a raise and then didn't get that raise, he can't expect to receive that gift like yeah. at all because that doesn't make any logical sense. You know what I mean? Like he, and then he can't blame her for continuing to punish him because of that. Like he fucked up and said some shit he didn't like need to say, which resulted in her not being able to get the funds to pay for the shit. Now, does she have a savings that could cover it? Absolutely. But maybe it's just like the frugal part of me. I'm not going to spend money like that, that I don't have to when I'm in a situation that I'm in, because now that she's basically been put on notice that she's not getting this promotion, it's unlikely that management is going to give her a promotion anytime soon. And she probably has to look for another company. Right. If she wants to climb up anymore. And most people do. So like it's it's a really fucked up situation all over. But yeah, I, I don't think anyone's necessarily the asshole. I just think the husband's being a dick. <laughs> He's not an yeah. asshole. He's just kind of being a, a little bit of a dick. He fucked yeah. up, shit happens, but like he right. now definitely. But just has admit to own that, that you did something wrong and Yeah. Yeah. And don't pull everything to be back into, oh, well, you're still mad at me about that. It's like, well, no, you're still feeling guilty about that. And that's right. why you're bringing this up the way you are. Yeah. So. It, um, it's a sticky situation. For sure. No matter what. Um, do you know which one okay. you're going to do next or do you need help? No. Because I needed I help. <laughs> um, okay, so am I the asshole for saying I won't coddle, coddle my infertile sister anymore? Give me a second before you make any snap judgments. I, my really sister, <laughs> Julie, has tried to have a baby for five years. She had a miscarriage two years ago, and outside of that, she has been unable to get pregnant. My heart hurts for her. However, one thing I don't agree with is how my family has handled it. We're not allowed to talk about babies around Julie. Any kids younger than three can't come to family events that she will attend. Ooh, she won't attend baby up. showers, baptisms, et cetera, et cetera. The last one I understand, but the rest feels like overkill. I got pregnant yeah. last year. I told Julie first, and she reiterated her boundaries. I said that I understood. The first hurdle came with my baby shower. My mother-in-law was throwing it, and I didn't expect Julie to come. Then my mom told me I shouldn't have had I shouldn't have one. Period. Out of respect. That's not how that Hell works. Hell no. Yeah. I said that that was Sorry. ridiculous. She didn't have to come. So what did it matter? Only three people from my sa side of the family came to my shower. When my son was okay. born, I posted a bird. Boy, the mm hmm. I posted a birth announcement on Facebook. My parents lectured me for this and said that it was going to hurt Julie. 
I said she could just block or mute me, and they said mm-hmm. that I should make the effort. Julie echoed that if I cared, I'd stop, and I ended up blocking her just, <laughs> just to save drama. At my aunt's seventieth birthday party, or my aunt's seventieth birthday party is next week. My husband and I planned to go and bring our son. Julie called and asked if we were going. She then asked for me to get a sitter for our son, and I said no. No. Yep. No. She doesn't want to miss the party. My aunt is one of the few people who agree that Julie's boundaries aren't fair and wants my yeah. son there. And she doesn't get to see him often. Julie got upset and started crying, saying that I was being unfair. I finally snapped and asked what would happen if she got pregnant. Would she, we all be expected to shower her with love and attention? She's refused to give other people's kids. Will her baby be allowed to attend events? She said that it was different, and I said, no, I'm not coddling her anymore. My son exists, he is family, and he is coming. She can decide if she wants to go or not. My parents yelled at me for being mean to Julie. They offered to pay for a sitter, but I said, no, it's not even her house. It might be asshole. Not even a little bit. Right? Sorry. This is the asshole. That's, like, again, I can understand being sensitive, not you know, like maybe not inviting Especially her right to away, the, but the showers like, and shit. Yeah. It's five years she's tried to have a, a baby. She had a miscarriage a year ago or two years ago. Right. And then just can't get pregnant. And I get like, especially in that first, oh, hey, Christian. Hey, Christian. Um, you know, in that first year, I get being sensitive. Um, but oh, I absolutely. mean, you can't. For her mother to tell her that she shouldn't have a baby shower, period, out of respect, fuck that, that she shit. shouldn't like, be posting about their joy online. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. Every parent should be able to post about like the joy of bringing new life into the world if that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, your sister needs to suck it the fuck up because, like, what is she gonna do? Turn off, like, not turn on the TV because heaven forbid it's a right. rerun of whatever that you know 16 and pregnant you know what i mean like the fuck right you can't avoid it forever and you can't tell other people that they can't allow kids at their events because it might make her think of you know the ones that she lost or was unable to conceive right like i'm sorry go to fucking therapy go to therapy or don't come like nobody's saying that you need to be there Right. Um, that's ridiculous. Uh, right. Yeah, based on the title, I was ready to be like, yeah, you're absolutely like, yeah, like you're being insensitive to your sister who's infertile. But mm-hmm. no, the sister set too many weird fucking boundaries that just don't make right. sense and aren't practical. Like, if it was something as right. simple as, like, you know, maybe, like, don't talk about it excessively when I'm there. Like, feel free to share right. the good news, but, like, please don't make that the point of conversation every time we talk. A totally fair boundary that's mm-hmm. reasonable i can right. even if it is you know two years removed that's reasonable but to be like no kids you can't post about it on social media like uh uh-uh. girl shut up <laughs> bye yep ridiculous well yeah. with that <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into like a fun something ish kind of game. I'm not really sure what Dave has cooked up for us this week. I have I'm sure no idea it'll either. be terrifying in some regard. Um, either terrifying, usually me, is like stupid, or and I mean that like a nice way. Not saying the game is dumb, just saying like people are stupid and um, they make silly, silly, silly choices. People are dumb. Um, hi. People be dumb. It is I, the voice of Dave. The artist formerly known as Dave, and currently known as Dave. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about a thing, and and that Uh is, like, which Marvel character is each of you? Like, on the inside. Uh, And on the outside. Okay. And so, BuzzFeed's gonna help us with that today. Good thing, because I'm really bad at making decisions, so I need BuzzFeed's help. Um, okay, so who wants to go first? Not it. 
Okay, so <laughs> danger. Got to pick a vacation <laughs> spot. Is there a list? Yeah, it's uh, in the Discord, I think. Oh. Would help if I was watching that. <laughs> um, Honolulu. Okay. Honolulu? All right. Mm -hmm. Pick something for breakfast. Uh, pancakes. Which MCU origin movie is your favorite? Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Guardians, Black Panther, or Captain Marvel? Um, oh, my choice is... Right? That's Captain a really America. fucking tough one. Captain America, okay. It's an easy choice for me. It's but it's between that and Iron Man. <clears throat> so that's what who it. who were you fighting crime with? Mark Ruffalo, Benedict Cumberbatch, Samuel L. Motherfucking Jackson, Tessa Thompson, yeah, Natalie Portman, or Zoe though. Saldana? It's what? Gotta be it's got to be Sam. <laughs> okay. I mean, Nick Fury by my side. Right. Uh, pick a TV character to save from Thanos' snap. Whoa. Christina Yang from Grey's Whoa. Anatomy, Jake Peralta from Brooklyn Nine Nine, Arya Stark from Game of Thrones, Eric F. Young from Sex Education, Eleven Eleven from Stranger Things, or Glenn Reeve from The Walking Dead. Uh, Glenn's death from The Walking Dead does have uh. PTSD inducing side effects to me. <laughs> but I'm mean, going to have to pick Jake Peralta. Good Overall. choice. Oh. Andy Sandberg. Mm -hmm. uh, pick an MCU duo Thor and Loki. Peter and Ned. Oh, this is easy. Okay. Really? Well, yeah, I'm going a little. Um, okay. On the inside, you're like Captain America, cunning, brave, and adventurous. You're someone who often thinks about others more than you think about yourself. You want to make this world a better... Read more. I didn't know what it, what it would do. Yeah, what it was going to do. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Um, <laughs> on the outside, you're like Ant-Man. People often perceive you as someone who is outspoken. Your confidence takes you far and often outweighs any fears or doubts you may have. Hmm. Well, Retake. D. Your okay. turn. Uh, we're gonna go with Paris. Je parle un peu de français. Uh, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Okay. Uh, oof, this one's tough. This one's actually tough for me. Mm -hmm. I know what you're gonna pick. I'm gonna have to go with... Do you? I'm gonna have to go with Guardians of the Galaxy because of the soundtrack. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. That's what I was gonna <laughs> say. And because of the soundtrack. Yeah, that's the only reason. Ah, uh, fuck, this one's tougher. No, it's not. Oh, You're going to pick Benedict was. Cumberbatch. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm stuck between Tessa Thompson and Natalie Portman. Super oh, okay. fair. I just... Right? Jawline I do on love this man. Benedict oh, I Cumberbatch. know. I almost yeah, picked he's Benedict, wonderful. to be honest. Um, but... I also love the shit out of Mark Ruffalo. I yeah. love him so oh, much. Oh, yeah. He's fucking amazing. I think I'm going to go with Tessa Thompson, though. I That's think I have fair. To. I think that's where my heart's leading. And it has to be uh, Jake Peralta or Eleven. No. Really? Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. You watched yeah, Game of Thrones? Oh, yeah, I was super upset by the ending. But yeah, I watched all of it. And uh, you're Bucky, Bucky and Steve. Steve. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That one's too obvious. <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah. You are Bucky on the inside and Thor on the okay. outside. Okay. So okay. on the inside, you're quiet, loyal, and practical. You prefer to spend time alone and not in big groups. It often takes you a little to warm up to new people. On the outside, you're like Thor, sincere, generous, and a leader. You're someone who appears to not take life too seriously. You want to make sure everyone around you is having an amazing time, even if that means you keep some of your own problems to yourself. That's wow, very that surprising and yeah. accurate for me. Right? I'm surprised. I like agreed with the Captain America job. spot, but yeah, the Ant Man wasn't as accurate for you. Yeah, I think. yeah, but the Captain America, I think, was accurate for you. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, are we doing Dave's now? We must be. 
Yeah, Finn, again, Dangerous is like mostly accurate. Hey, Ryder. I got the same What's as you, D. Nice. Well done. Well done. Yeah. I like that quiz. That was a good one. Yeah, no, I, I went. He does something right. You know what I mean? It's not always. Right. It's just sometimes. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Their quizzes are said, good. Every once in a while, BuzzFeed does something right. It's not yeah. always, it's just sometimes. I thought you said every once in a while, Dave does something right. And I, I was going to be like, God also, damn it. That's also accurate, mean, yeah. though. Like, to be <laughs> honest, it's also accurate. <laughs> we are good, Ryder. How are you? What is up? You missed Thanks tons of great stories. Thanks for into my stream last night. That was fun. Yeah. Just choosing violence today. We choose violence every day on this show. Always. Let me out, mother. I that crave violence. That should have been the title violence. of the stream. It should have been choosing violence now with brownies. That should have been what we went with, Dave. I'll have to remember that for next time. Oh, I was just going to update the stream title. <laughs> okay, do it. Do it, pussy. You won't. Huh. <laughs> That'll just for that, go. it's going to say, now it's going to say choosing pussy now with brownies. <laughs> that no, is... no, you can't put that as a stream. No, no, no. I mean, I was typing and you said that word and I oh. typed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm Let us know. excited. We're always up for new friends. Always. New friends. Always, always. I, uh, Get stuffed. Choosing violence now with brownies. Now with brownies. There you go. As it should be. Yeah, All right, it. I'm gonna retreat about back it. into Sounds the fun. cave. Okay, okay. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you for a fun quiz. That was fun. Yeah. I think you were also. I think Ant Man for you because you were definitely trying to like read and understand. Did I just lose audio? A little bit. But I turned you up. I can hear you. Okay. Sometimes this happens and I don't know why. Always. Okay, what about now? Uh, yeah. We can hear you. It's just still not great. What about now? It's better. Okay. Yeah. I miss this. Yes. Is it better now, though? A little bit. A little bit? Hmm. I feel like I'm a BI doctor. A or B? <laughs> B or C? We are BI doctors now. D That's or A? Right? <laughs> yes. We are professionals. Oh, yeah. man. Um, well, one or two. Yeah. Right. Um, that was a lot of fun. That I enjoyed fun. that. And those were good stories this week, too. They're good every week. I mean, we always pick winners. Yeah. Um, but there was definitely some that we got passionate about this week. Uh, and there's one that I laughed way too hard at this week right. as well. God, that was fun. <laughs> and then looking it's for my last to. one, I saw the like beginning of that one and I laughed all over again to myself because I just yeah. read the first sentence. <laughs> it's just I got to the good. Jesse and was like, fucking Jesse. I want to yeah. know more about this Jesse character now. Like, I think she needs to have an, a Reddit ask me anything. Right. And all the questions are going to be, I yeah. mean, why are you letting that shit sit there? Hey, you know? Ryder, Ryder can attest that I legitimately, um, so I met him through an ex-boyfriend of mine, like in a whole mm -hmm. group of friends. And Ryder's about the only one I still talk to. But, uh, he never like cleaned under the toilet seat, like so there was just buildup oh. of pee and it was yellow all the fucking time. And it was even like a joke initially that I brought it up. And yeah, it was fucking nasty. And like as a joke, I brought it up, and he made some comments about like, well, you know, I'm not cleaning that if I work all day and. You know, I'm tired when I get home and all this shit. And I was like, fuck, I don't live to toilet seat up when seconds, I pee. Though. So, like, I'm not asking you to do it every day or every time. Like, just clean it every once in a while. Like, yeah. I don't need to see the buildup of your yellow-ass pee all over the toilet seat. And 
Uh, right? Exactly, Chris. Right. And um, there's so much more that I'm not going to talk about on air, but I can yeah. tell you the whole story off air sometime. But it legitimately, like, divulged into this where I'm just like, you know what? I'm done. Like, peace, yeah. homies. Because if we can't no, that's ugly. Mm, absolutely not. That's gross. Um, but <laughs> maybe he needs one. Um, right. But yeah, like, no, that's just not, that's not how things are going to work in a relationship. Mm -hmm. with Sorry there, bud. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, you can, like, I, you know, fucking whatever, all the little things yeah. that people do in relationships, but. That's gross, though. Yeah, needs, like no, I'm not. Jesus. He does need Jesus. He does need Jesus. <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. But I said that to Jesus. myself the other day. I don't know what happened, but like, I did something be... that was really <laughs> stupid, <laughs> and I just to myself out loud was like, "You need God." <laughs> <laughs> See, and I just like walk around thinking, "I need Jesus." <laughs> <laughs> Literally, and I said it out loud. To myself, which is, I think is the better amazing. part. Is that, that it wasn't even like an inside that. thought. It was an outside thought. <laughs> it was thought, an outside unfortunately. thought. Unfortunately. Right. Yeah, it was an outside thought. Um, I don't remember what it was, though. I'm sure it was something really fucking ben, dumb. I love but... how you're stealing memes from LTN's meme thing and putting them in your own server. That's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. And it's funnier because I believe that there are two memes that <laughs> Chris posted in LTN that are now <laughs> posted by Ben and Ben's Discord server. Oh, that's oh, amazing. And it's the Yoda, like, that. my organs. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the sandwiches. What he posted. Oh, yeah. I, just, I happened to click on it and it made me happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what do you fun. say we get into the uh, Femme 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 for this week? Yes. Yes. Well, this week we are talking about the wonderful Anne Hathaway. Gorgeous. Um, oh, I know. She's beautiful. Her name is Anne Jacqueline Hathaway. She was born on November 12th of 1982 in Brooklyn, New York, which I didn't realize that she was a New York girl. I, uh, it... I would not have guessed that about her, like, general right. presence. But yeah. I don't know where I thought she was from, but Brooklyn surprises me. Yeah. So she was born there, but I guess she then went to Milburn High School yeah. in Jersey, um, which is a four-year public high school. So I'm not sure. I guess they must have moved. Um, I don't think it's like it was a, you know, arts school or anything like that. Um because it doesn't say that it was. It just says that she attended Brooklyn Heights Montessori School and then Wyoming Elementary School in Melbourne. So they must have moved pretty early on. They didn't, doesn't say anything about it. Um, she was born to Gerald, a labor attorney, and mother, Kate, named Macaulay, uh, is also a former actress, which I did not know. Um, I don't think she's a popular actress, though, because her Wikilink was not clickable. So it might just be that she was um, more uh, lesser known, more community based theater, which is totally fine. Right. Um, and Hathaway's maternal grandfather was um, a Philadelphia radio personality named Joe McCulley, which I have heard that name before, um, probably because of, you know, proximity. But anyway, she was, in fact, named after Shakespeare's wife, which I always loved because I definitely love Shakespeare. And so having, knowing that she was named after Shakespeare's famous wife of when they got divorced, he gave her the second best bed. That's the whole thing. Yep. I could go on for a while about that. Very fascinating. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good old uh, male. Yeah. Right. So when she was six, she actually saw her mom perform in Les Miserables as Fantine. And that's when she became like oh, sure. totally in love with theater, which then if, those of you who know her career, she then went on to be in Les Miserables later in life, in like 2000 something. We'll get to it. We'll get there. Um, but uh, because she was raised Catholic, she um, at one point wanted to be a nun during her childhood. Like, 
she gave up the, on the acting to be like, hmm, devote my life to God. And then I guess was like, <laughs> JK, LOL. <laughs> um, which actually, the reason why her views on that changed, which I think is really respectable in a lot of ways, um, was because at the age of 15, her older brother Michael came out. And so anyone who's familiar with the Catholic Church knows that for a really long time, and depending on whose pope, it changes, um, homosexuality was not, like, approved. Um, and they would be very unwelcoming in the churches. So her family actually left the church and converted to Episcopalians um, wow. because they were more accepting as a general, like, overall oh, Christian belief. Um, so I think that that's interesting um anyway she went on to go do a a whole bunch of stuff obviously she was in the princess diaries which as a kid i fucking loved those movies as like a teenager um i still love those movies who am i lying to like yeah i definitely still watch them yeah absolutely i mean yeah and i mean chris pine in the second one yes kills me Uh oh amazing um, but she's been in a ton of other things. Like she was in um Ella Enchanted, which was also a great movie. She was in Nicholas Nickleby. Oh, Ella Enchanted is so good. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something that I didn't know until I researched her was that she actually turned down the role of Christine Daae in The Phantom of the Opera. Really? Which I was like, I can't imagine I her playing Christine. I mean, it, uh, yeah, the you ended up playing Christine was phenomenal. I wouldn't have really done it any other way. She was perfect. Yeah, I yes. can't imagine Hathaway's voice in it. She has I a good can't. voice, but it's not Christine Daae good. No, you know what I mean. No. Like, that's a specific. And I can't imagine anybody but Christine. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But the reason she turned it down was because the film overlapped with shooting the Princess Diaries too. Yeah. That I that I, I knew that she had turned something down. I just didn't. Know yeah. What. Um, she was actually nervous about starring in the sequel, but agreed to it after um the director convinced her that she would not be repeating anything. Um, the film was released in two thousand four and got negative reviews, but it made ninety five point one million dollars against a forty million dollar budget. So it was successful, even though it was critically a little bit panned. Yeah. Um. So then she went on trying to get you know, better roles. <laughs> Not like kid roles, you know what I mean? She grew up, and so naturally her roles needed to grow up as well. Right. So that's when she started um, being in movies like Brokeback Mountain, um, which is obviously a steep departure from The Princess Diaries. Um, definitely like the opposite side of the spectrum. Um, right. She was then in The Devil Wears Prada in 2006, which is a great that fucking movie. Oh, God, The Devil Wears Prada is amazing. Yeah, right? Um, and I, because I had to look it up before because I don't like when I'm wrong, um, she played Fantaine in Les Mis as well. Yeah. So she went mm-hmm. for a pie's girl her, she had first seen her mother in, which is kind of adorable. Right. Not like, Isn't that super um, cute? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I didn't know is that she was, Hathaway was the ninth choice for the role um, for oh. Devil Wears Prada. Which I don't know who is ahead of her, but like now I want that list. Yeah. Um, right. Um, she and Emily Blunt though did say that they got so hungry on their weight loss regimen for the film that she was like in tears most of the time. Which I didn't think about it that that they like had to lose weight for that role. Which I think is something that the Hollywood fucks up on so much. Like starving oh, yeah. actors or uh Zach Efron recently came out and said that when he was filming Baywatch, yeah. um, that he was on diuretics. And it yeah. really fucked him up. Like long term, gave him like a deep depression because it yeah. messed with his system, with the delicate right. ecosystem that is the human body. Um, so, like, I think that that's something that totally needs to change about Hollywood, just because it's not that's not healthy. Right. Really. No, um, right. Yeah. Um. So since then, she's I mean, she's been in a ton of stuff. She's done things like Bride Wars, which was very funny. I definitely enjoyed that. Bride Wars um, was good. Right. Um, she was in other like romantic comedies like Valentine's Day. Um, but she's also done some other like more serious roles um, as well as the years have gone on, such as, obviously, 
um, being in Les Miserables as Fantine, um, who, if you're not familiar with that character, Fantine is a prostitute dying of tuberculosis who sings this gorgeous song. It's one of my favorites on the track, and it makes me fucking cry all the time um, every time I hear it. It's I Dreamed a Dream, and she's talking about how like she got pregnant at a young age, um, yeah. and the guy that like got her pregnant was like, I love you, we're always going to be together, all this stuff, and then she gets pregnant, and he's like, deuces, bitch. And she's like, it ruined my life. And so, like, I dreamed a dream of time gone by um, when we were young and uh, now I can't think of the source. But it's it's a gorgeous song. Um, so, like, a very serious role. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I It's beautiful. Um, so she's continued to act. Um, most recently, she's um, she was on... The Apple TV miniseries We Crashed, opposite of Jared Leto, um, oh. which I did not watch because uh, Apple TV Plus seems like a weird fucking thing to me. I don't really enjoy okay. it. Um, but she care. also starred in James Gray's semi-autobiographical period drama Armageddon Time. Um, and then she is she'll be playing a leading role in a film based on the Sesame Street franchise, which I'm like, huh? Yeah. I don't understand. What? We're making a movie about Sesame Street? Okay. All right. Uh, She's also going to star in an adaptation of uh, Pamela Druckerman's book, Bringing Up Bebe, One American Mother Discovers the Wisdom of French Parenting, which I'm curious as to what that is going to be like. Um, she's also set to star with Jessica Chastain in the psychological thriller Mother's Instinct, um, okay. which was uh, based on a French book, actually. So there's a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of French theme in her life. Yeah. Um, there's also, she signed on to the star in Rebecca Miller's romantic comedy, She Came to Me, alongside Tahar Rahim, Marisa Tomei, Joanna Kulig, and Matthew Broderick. Um, so. And then we get into like a little bit more about her as a person. Um, she was reportedly one of the world's highest paid actresses in 2015. Um, and since 2017 has been one of the highest grossing actresses of the 21st century, as according to like Forbes magazine. Um, okay. She's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's basically what her public image section on Wiki said. Um, but then we get into like uh, the part that I liked as well, which is her activism and political work. Uh, Mm -hmm. So she's been a long-term advocate for the Nike Foundation um, to raise awareness against child marriage, which is unfortunately a thing that still happens quite a lot and is disgusting. Children should not be made brides or grooms either way. Fucking gross. Um, She also helped vaccinate Nicaraguan children against Hep A. She's done tons of, like, women's rights um, initiatives in countries like Kenya and Ethiopia. Um, she was honored at L Woman, L's Women in Hollywood tribute, tribute and won an award from the Human Rights Campaign for all of her philanthropy work. Uh, she's served on the board of the Lollipop Theater Network and is involved with the Creative Coalition, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, and the Human Rights Campaign. Uh, she has always been a supporter of LGBT rights, again, since talking about when her brother came out uh, when he was 15. Um, and she's been in a UN goodwill ambassador as well. Mm -hmm. Um, she's spoken, she spoke recently at the international women's day in favor of paid parental leave for both men and women, which is something that I'm also a big advocate for women go through a massive change when they have a baby, obviously, but men go through an adjustment as well. And they should also, they deserve to have time to bond with their kid. I think that's super important. Um, and she's also, um, advocated for greater professional opportunities for women in Hollywood because of, him, you know, the systemic sexism in the industry itself. Right. Um, so she's been uh, very outspoken about that. Um, so, yeah, she's just done a lot uh, in her time and in her career. And then, you know, personally and romantically, in 2004, she was in a relationship with the Italian real estate developer Raffaello Folieri. I don't know if that's how you actually say his name. Don't really care. Mm-hmm. Um, but in 2008, Folieri was arrested on charges of defrauding investors in like a Ponzi scheme sort of situation. 
Um, it was reported that the FBI actually confiscated Hathaway's private journals from Foliari's New York City apartment as part of their ongoing investigation into his activities. She obviously didn't get charged with anything, but he was sentenced to four and a half years in prison after pleading guilty in 2008. So he, like, he did it, basically. Um, she also has been outspoken about, like, her experiences with depression. Um, she, um, she said in 2008 she began smoking after a stressful summer at the end of her relationship with Foliari. She was credited quitted smoking, quitting smoking to the subsequent decline in her stress level and returned to being a vegetarian. Uh, she evidently then went on to become a vegan in 2012, but then stopped being a vegan in 2014 because veganism is hard. Um, right. Then she went on to marry actor and businessman Adam Schulman in 2012. Uh, their first son was born in March of 2016. Um, and that's kind of it other than her most yeah. recent, uh, in July of 2019, she announced that they're expecting their second child together, yeah. um, and opened up about the fact that they had been struggling with, um, fertility issues in the three years between the two births. Right. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about Anne Hathaway. And I mean, I could go through the list of movies that she's been in, but we'd be here all fucking day. Because she's been yeah. in a lot. She has. Yeah. She has. But she is, yeah, just, I mean, she is, uh, she plays that role of, like, the awkward girl, you know, mm-hmm. so well. But, yeah, like, she's super lovable and down to earth. And, yeah, yeah. She's, just, she's very fun. She I is. watching her in movies. Right. Yeah. Pretty much so. <laughs> legit I read by it legit uh, yeah but yeah no she I think is a great great pick today I think so and like I said a lot of times we definitely focus on people who are like contributing to society yep. in different ways like Dolly Parton and Betty White right uh, and I definitely count Anne Hathaway in that group for how outspoken she has been in the past yeah so I appreciate it. I appreciate her, and I love watching movies she's in. The yeah. bookcase behind me, like this whole middle section, is all movies, and there are so many Anne Hathaway movies in there. I like, so, so I love it because I love her. I think she's, I think she's yeah. great, and I think she's a joy to watch on screen. And while she may have gotten some shit for her acting in Les Mis, um, because she's obviously not British, and she had to do right. like whole acting, the whole thing. I well, and people were so so critical of the movie, they and were. I I didn't mind the movie. I mm-hmm. um for me, like having went from seeing it live, seeing the Les Mis production live, the movie right. made a lot of things click for me that didn't click during the um stage production because right. there you know i mean there's just so much you You're can't limited. show in different yeah. settings yeah um but i think that they they did a good job um and who fucking knew that russell crowe could sing like that um uh, right. i didn't for number one Jean um mm-hmm. jean valjean yeah he, didn't he play jean valjean or Jean was Jean was um, it's, uh, Hugh Jackman. Sorry, Hugh Jackman. We yeah. knew Hugh Jackman could sing. Yeah, yeah I know you're Javier's, not. Um, yeah, Javier is. Javier is is Russell Crowe. Um, but yeah, it just all in all, like I thought that they did a good job with it, and people were just so too. overly critical about shit. Agreed. Like, whatever. Unnecessarily. Right. Like yeah. it's still enjoyable, but it is very long. Um, it is a long movie. Favorite. For sure. So I remember seeing it in theaters when it came out because I was in college at the time. And we unfortunately went with someone who was not appreciative of the movie at all. And when me and my best friend were like crying at some of these scenes at the end, because like it's a very emotional movie, all if you haven't seen it, like shit yeah. goes down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like shit absolutely goes down. Everybody dies. <laughs> Nobody's happy. Like, I mean, I guess there's, like, a moment of happiness at the ending. Whatever. Um, So, like, we're, like, tearing up. You know what I mean? We're trying to, like, covertly, like, wipe the tears out of our eyes. And this person who we're no longer friends with 
um, looked over and was like laughing. She's like, why are you guys crying? This isn't even sad. And I was like, you have no soul. That's why you're not fucking sad. This is sad for normal people. Like, fuck off. (laughs) Yeah. So that's my memory. But Anne Hathaway did a great job. That has nothing to do with that. That's just (laughs) extra ADD story time. (laughs) Um. (laughs) You know, you're lucky that I realized that that was our own channel and didn't try to. Yeah, I was like, "What? It. How the fuck did a spammer get?" Yeah. Uh, but that's right? actually pretty fucking brilliant, and I want to make that funny. in my own. Yeah, um, that's great. But um, yeah, I was like, "Excuse me, asshole." Yeah, exactly. Invite you here? Fuck out of me. <laughs> right? Nobody invited you to this party. Get out of here. Right? Speaking of the LT channel, there's boys show tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you guys are still at six PM, correct? Eastern. Yes. Okay, good. Um, we have on Thursdays we have our community game nights, which is usually around eight thirty or start Can time. Even go You'll see. Why are you from the school? Why are you no. there? Sorry. And then sometime coming within like the next less than a month now um yeah. danger and chris and i will be starting our podcast pucked up where we're going to talk about all things hockey occasionally yeah. some other sports might get thrown into the mix just if it's Fuck like really shit. you know interesting hockey. stuff that we really want to talk about hockey. but it's going to be hockey it's called pucked up for a reason right. uh and we're going to talk shit about uh sydney crosby that's the number one ticket out well, of the day no i haven't well, mentioned this with any of any of my penguins. <laughs> can we just say yeah, it and exactly. agree fuck the pittsburgh penguins i mean i think that there's that should be a whole segment every week about <laughs> how much oh my god can I we have a segment about them? why we hate the penguins so much every week yeah and, and every week my reasons would be fucking Sidney crosby he's well, got mine such a punchable goes back face to, like he does have a punchable face um yeah same with Tom Cruise. Very punchable. Yes, but I also would want to fuck with Tom Cruise. Um, oh, I'd so want to fuck with Tom Cruise. I mean, I'd probably <laughs> die for it. Like, I, the Scientologist community is worth- currently tracking oh, my yeah. location to take me out, but super like, duper. Man, yeah, him. yeah, we can fucking shit talk Kane all day, every day. Oh, we'll absolutely shit talk Evander Kane. And Sidney Crosby, he deserves it. A little bit, like, he, but he is a very talented hockey player. But I also want to punch him in the throat. So he's got skills. He's just a whiny little bitch. Um, if he whined we, less, he'd be better. I agree. Come at me, fight me. And these are the these are the hot takes you can expect to see on our show. Um, like like my hot <laughs> take in the Food Channel the other day. Our oh, yeah. first, D and I had our first ever fight, guys. We did ever. Mm-hmm. I, I will say we are still the best of friends. It did not yeah, affect our friendship. Yeah. However, she's wrong. I no, you are allowed to have an opinion even when they're wrong. No, um, no. but you but I thought it said to express wrong I said I think tacos are more important than pumpkin spice. So there I said it bite me. Yeah. I, and I did because my heart was hurt. I'm sure it was, but fuck pumpkin spice and just, I literally, Dave, unmute for a second and tell the people what the one thing I want in life the most is. Tacos. He's unmuting. What is the one thing in life? Um, she wants someone to tell her she's pretty and pumpkin spice. Fuck off! I hate you. Get out of here. You're no, and tacos. She wants tacos. And, and hand feed tell her you she's tacos. Pretty. It, yes. Yeah. Just tell me I'm pretty and feed me tacos. That's all I need in my life. Tell me. I I'm mean, you and Chris and can both tacos. be wrong, but first of all, I know Christian's on my side. He is also a pumpkin spice stan. So, also Loki, Lucky, Loki, oh, Lucky, Lucky, Loki. <laughs> His name is a tongue twister, man. I, it, I'm it is. It's, it's else. bad. A wonderful name though. Great name. He's yeah. also a pumpkin spice stan. So, well, you're yeah, but I think I got him converted to the taco train. Yeah, but he's gonna make a pumpkin spice taco. So each. No, show. I was gonna make a pumpkin spice taco. 
We're, He's going to too. We were both going to make two of you together. Can bring we're going to make that. pumpkin spice tacos together. Him and I yeah. actually have a special event tomorrow night too. Okay, that'll be fun. So there will be, be none, none that. of that. He's cool. <laughs> there will be cool none of that. That. That that. That, there will be none of what? Pumpkin spice tacos? Pumpkin spice tacos. That, is, that is a war crime. Ah. It's a dessert taco. It's probably delicious. I can't wait to try it. It's hey, actually, they discontinued the Choco taco. taco. We need to find something to replace it. Right. That is fair. That's fair. Ooh, pumpkin. But anyway, all this to say, come join our Discord where you can see other hot takes. Taco. Such as that. And vanilla. Yeah. But yes, the Pucked Up podcast is going to be a YouTube exclusive. So you should not only follow us here on this platform, but if you're watching on YouTube or if you want to watch on YouTube, you should go over there and subscribe on that platform. Also, if you want to subscribe on this platform, we would welcome it. Please do. Always. Please and thank you. Use that Prime sub. It'll go to waste. Always. You don't. It does. Yeah. But. Uh, um, buy our new cookbook. Yeah, we should make a cookbook. We legitimately should yeah we'd be good at that um but also join our discord where we have a lot of fun um sometimes after these shows we'll then jump in the general chat and just hang out for a bit sometimes we have movie nights where we watch um usually it's what the boys want to watch um unless it's like a d and danger night in which case we only watch supernatural because we have to and that's also why um, there's only a d and danger channel now yeah where we can hide because occasionally people join us that we love but then they talk but who, like want to have a conversation yeah and, and we it's like watch we're, we're like we're trying to binge this shit and get through yeah and if you're not talking about like we can talk about the show for right. sure because we will right. pause it and be like first of all jensen ackles jensen ackles is Woo! a hottie first of all i'm Fair for enough. it Second of all, yeah, um, but... we'll talk about like what's happening in the show. I will complain because I'm super unhappy with them <laughs> killing off a certain person. Um, but like, I don't want to have a conversation about tacos while we're watching it. Sorry. Unless we're eating tacos. And then in that case, if you're eating tacos, you need to send me tacos. Also, what? Taco Bell, sponsor us. Oh. Please. Please sponsor us. Right. Um, so anyway, with that, thank you all so much for joining us again this week. I had a blast personally, but I have fun every week, so same, that's not really same. a surprise. No, we will be yeah. um, right, Bill. back here same time next week. Same time, probably. Same uh, check yep. the boys out tomorrow. Community game night on Thursday. Uh, come help me with shenanigans for Super Secret Craft in my own channel. Yeah. If y'all don't mind me plugging that shit, and watch her own individual streams. Um, do that. And Same. my name is just Danger Water. Uh, because yeah. I did just start streaming, but I'm not very creative. So shenanigans, y'all can put me up to against other people. I'll we'll figure mm -hmm. it out when you can vote for what to do to absolutely. Know and I am not yeah. streaming because, like I told Chris, uh, with what time? Yeah, right. Yeah, you do have a lot going on in your life, but I'm glad that you make this a uh, yeah. thing. But, yeah, so we will like raid, raid Jill. Jill. We'll say yep. hello to her. Uh, say, I'll pull out my double D. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. Say bye. <laughs> Thank you.